What is the number one mistake every cricket player makes in the gym? Social media shows us so much information of what we should be doing and shouldn't be doing in the gym. Some of it is great, and some of it not so great. I'm Nath Nobri and I'm the owner of Proteus Cricket, where we look to develop the physicality of cricket players so they can maximize their performance on the field. And in this video, I'm gonna look at the number one mistake I see in the information out there, one that I once thought was good myself. The first few years of lifting is where we can make some serious progress, and we want to capitalize on this period as much as we can. I'll show you why we don't want to be doing this mistake in our training and what we should be doing instead. A lot of cricket players seem to think that we need to make up exercises in the gym so it looks like we're batting or bowling. You don't see football players strapping weights to their ankles and going around the gym kicking to try and improve the power in their shot. Now, they will simplify this and look at improving their knee extension by using exercises like the squat or the leg extension. These exercises are tried and tested in terms of developing one's knee extension and the most effective way to do so. If you were to go kicking around the gym, you're gonna bring in other factors like balance, which is then gonna lower the stimulus on the muscles we want to work. Let's look at this pyramid that I base a lot of my programming off. At the base of the pyramid is our absolute strength levels. The bigger our base, the more powerful of an athlete we can become. You'll never see a powerful athlete who isn't strong. At the next level would be our speed work. This will include a lot of areas like our strength speed work, our speed strength work, and our absolute speed. This will look to build speed on top of our strength so that we become more powerful. Remember, power is equal to speed times strength. At the top of the pyramid is then our sports specific movements. This will be ensuring you're proficient enough in your technique to express that power. For the most part, this will be done in the nets and cricket training and not in the gym. Most of these sports specific exercises tend to merge two exercises to try and make it look like a movement within your sport. Now, the issue with this is that you water down the stimulus of each exercise. Let's look at an example of an exercise that includes two movements the Renegade Row, a movement that is generally used for back development because it's got row in its name. This takes the plank, a great core exercises, and a row, a great back exercise, but combined gives you an exercise that doesn't give you a great stimulus in your back and is probably a better core exercise than anything else. The issue with these exercises is that the smallest muscle group would always be the one that gives out first, leaving the larger muscle group understimulated. We want to be as efficient as we can in the gym. The goal is to get strong and powerful so that we can carry this across to cricket. Training will slightly change based on your goals and the time of the season. Let's take a look at an example of training we could use pre-season if the goal was to get stronger. Let's say we have a game on the Saturday. We want to carry as little fatigue as we can into this game as possible. Although we're not worried about a little bit as it's only pre-season. We can do gym work on the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and each day will be a full body session. This doesn't mean we'll be using exercises that use the whole body, but we'll be covering each body part in each of the session. We'll pick a compound movement for each day to get strong on, and then pair it with isolated movements for hypertrophy and injury prevention. On Monday, we can squat, Tuesday, we can bench, and Wednesday, we can deadlift. On the Monday, we'll add in a dumbbell incline bench press, a seated cable row, barbell curl, and a cable crunch. On the Tuesday, a landmine press, bent over row, rear elevated split squat and a dumbbell RDL. On the Wednesday, a cable pull down, skull crushers, leg extension, and a seated calf raise. This will be ample training for us to make really good progress in the gym, but also give us enough time to recover between games. If you want to become a stronger and more powerful cricket player, I'd say work on the base of that pyramid, your strength and your speed, and then the sport specific stuff will then come in your cricket training away from the gym. If you want more training tips like this, have a look in the description below where I'll link our free ebook. For schedules around your training, go and check out this video.